on World News Tonight. Omicron spreads. Countries shut down its borders once again as infection fears lose. Research resumes. The race to decode the variant of concern begins worldwide at full steam. Sovereign nation. Barbados celebrates independence with the face of the new national leader. Season's greetings. Christmas spirit is in the air as countries feel the cheer of a magical month. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is the Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Suzanne Shainali. Season's greetings to all and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. On today's coverage, we start off with the updates on the COVID pandemic. Scientists are feverishly trying to understand the heavily mutated variant, tracing its origin to a different and earlier path than first thought. Some critical answers of the variant are still weeks away, but there soon will be a new tool in the fight against COVID-19. One step closer to a pill for treating COVID. An FDA advisory panel narrowly voting to recommend authorization of Merck's antiviral pill. This is an oral medication that can be administered in the comfort of the patient's home, uh, can be given as a prescription and picked up in the pharmacy. While as the Omicron variant spreads, the World Health Organization is advising people 60 and older and those with comorbidities like heart disease and cancer to postpone travel. Meanwhile, the White House COVID response team says there are now at least 226 confirmed cases across 20 countries. One thing has become clear over the last 20 months. We cannot predict the future, but we can be prepared for it. The CDC is now expanding its surveillance to four of the busiest airports in the country. New York's JFK, Newark, Atlanta, and San Francisco, with increased testing for specific international arrivals. This illustration shows the Omicron variant compared to the Delta strain. Notice how many more mutations it has. It turns out it was on the move earlier than we thought. The first known cases reported in Botswana on November 11th. Officials in the Netherlands also say the strain was apparently already in the country at least a week earlier than previously believed. Still, U.S. officials say it could be two weeks before we have more solid information as Americans prepare for the holidays. I would not change any plans, but that doesn't mean you should be cavalier about it. Today, stocks tumbled again, the Dow dropping more than 650 points. Concerns are growing about the effectiveness of therapies and vaccines against the variant. Regeneron now says its monoclonal antibody treatment may not work as well on Omicron as it does on other strains. And Moderna's CEO warned today he expects a material drop in existing vaccines protection against Omicron. While late today, Pfizer applied for the first emergency use authorization of COVID boosters for 16 and 17 year olds. There's no timeline on when the FDA could act. The fast-spreading Omicron variant of the coronavirus had been detected in a number of new countries, including Japan. Despite mounting concerns, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said that a new COVID-19 lockdown in England was unlikely at this stage. As Dutch health officials rushed to quarantine passengers arriving on two flights from South Africa on Friday, the Omicron variant was already circulating in the Netherlands. The country's National Institute for Public Health just confirmed it found Omicron in test samples taken on November 19th and the 23rd. That's even before South Africa first shared news of the variant with the world. Dutch officials don't know whether those who took the test had visited Southern Africa. While the variant's origins remain unknown, that hasn't stopped dozens of countries from rushing to impose a new wave of travel restrictions mostly on those coming from southern Africa. Spain is the latest to join the long list. Today we have an agreement related to the restrictions on flights from southern Africa. Already 10 European countries have confirmed 42 cases of the Omicron variant, including in France's Reunion Island. As mask mandates return and vaccination campaigns are stepped up, researchers in the lab in South Africa that discovered the variant are working around the clock to learn more about it. Scientists are particularly keen to discover how effective the current vaccines are against the Omicron variant.
Global vaccine makers are working to tailor their shots to fight the Omicron variant as countries tighten restrictions. It remains to be seen whether the existing products will be effective. The B11529 variant of concern, now dubbed Omicron by the World Health Organization, has the world on high alert over its rapid spread. And vaccine manufacturers say they are working to develop Omicron specific vaccines. Pfizer CEO Albert Bola says that the company has already started work on a new vaccine and it could be ready in less than 100 days. He also said that Pfizer's COVID 19 treatment pill will be effective against the Omicron variant. Johnson & Johnson has been working with academic groups in South Africa, where the variant was first identified, to evaluate the effectiveness of its adenovirus vaccine, reiterating that they remain confident in its efficacy. AstraZeneca had indicated similar efforts, adding that its vaccine platform developed jointly with Oxford University enables a quick response to new variants. Moderna said it could have a tweaked version of a shot ready early next year if necessary. However, it is not yet clear as to how effective the current COVID-19 vaccines will be against Omicron. On Tuesday, the head of Moderna said that the current vaccines are unlikely to be as effective against Omicron as they have proved to be against the Delta variant, adding that all the scientists he talked to have hinted that it's not going to be good. What is more concerning is that scientists have pointed to the vaccine inequality around the world to be a cause of virus mutation, which means there may be more variants in the horizon. Japan will reinstate tough border measures barring all new foreign arrivals over the Omicron COVID variant. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida announced just weeks after softening of strict entry rules. Empty airport terminals. This scene at Haneda in Tokyo is one that many would have hoped confined to the pandemic past. Japan's ban on all foreign travelers came back into effect on Tuesday. It would last at least a month while the world awaits more concrete information about the risks of the new Omicron coronavirus variant, which has some in Japan concerned. We must have entry restrictions. It's better to have them sooner rather than later before the situation gets too bad. I'm not sure when my husband can come back. Even if he does, he will have to quarantine. It's probably a good idea until they, they understand more about it. Nothing wrong with a little caution. The new border closure comes as the government confirms that a man returning from Namibia had tested positive for the Omicron variant. This is the first case of Omicron that has been found in our country. The health ministry has confirmed that the person infected is quarantined at a medical facility. The science is not yet clear on how infectious or dangerous the Omicron variant is. But that hasn't stopped over 30 countries banning travel from nine southern African nations since it was first identified there last week. G7 health ministers have called for urgent action, but United States President Joe Biden says he does not intend to impose a new travel ban. According to President Xi Jinping, China will deliver another 1 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines to Africa and encourage Chinese companies to invest no less than $10 billion in the continent over the next three years. China has promised a further 1 billion COVID-19 vaccine doses to the African continent amid intensifying concerns over the spread of the Omicron variant. Speaking via video link at the Forum for China-Africa Cooperation on Monday, President Xi Jinping said 600 million shots would be donations, the remaining 400 coming from other means, such as joint production between Chinese companies and relevant African countries. In order to achieve the goal of getting 60% of the African population vaccinated against COVID by 2022, I announced that once again China will send 1 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines to African nations, 600 million of which will be granted as aid. China has already provided nearly 200 million vaccines to the continent, where vaccination rates have lagged behind wealthier parts of the world. 
Xi also said China would build 10 health projects in Africa and send 1,500 health experts. Chinese companies will be encouraged to spend no less than $10 billion in the continent over the next three years. China will never forget its deep friendship with the African nations and will continue to uphold the principles of truth the correct view of justice and to work with African friends. Allowing China and African countries to build a good spirit of cooperation from generation to generation and to develop together. The announcement comes amid criticism of China's infrastructure for commodities deals that some say saddle countries with unsustainable debt. Last week, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, without naming China, criticized international infrastructure deals that are, quote, opaque and coercive, and said Washington would be pursuing cleaner deals. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back. The United States and its NATO allies are warning of serious consequences if Russia intervenes in the war in Ukraine. In the bombed out European neighborhoods of the conflict, some residents have already resigned themselves to widening conflict. There will be a high, a high price to pay for Russia uh, if they once again use force against the independent sovereign nation uh, Ukraine. And any renewed aggression uh, would trigger serious consequences. That's NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg and U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken speaking at the NATO Alliance Summit in Latvia Tuesday, warning Russia would pay a high price for any new military aggression against Ukraine. That same day, speaking at an investment forum in Moscow, Russian President Vladimir Putin said his country will be forced to act if NATO deploys certain missiles into Ukraine, what he calls a red line. But on the front line of the conflict in Ukraine, in ruins of European neighborhoods smashed by artillery fire, and in towns near an active war zone between the government and pro-Russian separatists, some residents say they've resigned themselves to the idea that a wider conflict between Ukraine and Russia could come at any time. Kramatorsk is about 30 miles away from the actual front line, where Ukrainian soldiers and residents have told that the separatists launch artillery strikes every day, trying to provoke a response. And Moscow dismisses Western concerns of an intervention by Russian troops as alarmist. Now moving on to the updates of the investigation on the deadly January 6th Capitol riot. Let's cross over to other than a world news special correspondent Nikola Sena, Ratna reporting from New York in the United States. Nikola? Yes, Shenali. House of Representative Committee, who is on the investigation, said that Mark Meadows, who served as a former president, Donald Trump's chief of staff has provided it with all records and agreed to appear soon for disposition. Democratic Representative Benny Thompson did not rule out future action against Meadows. Nothing that the panel expects all witnesses to provide all information requested that is lawfully entitled to receive. Trump has urged his associates not to cooperate with the committee, calling the Democratic-led investigation politically motivated and arguing that his communications are protected by executive privilege, although many legal experts say that the legal principle does not apply to former president. Meadows was called to appear before the committee did this month, but did not do so. Agreeing to appear for a disposition does not guarantee that Meadows will provide all the information requested in the committee's subtone. Clark appeared, but committee members said that he did not cooperate to investigate. Back to you, Shanali. Thank you, and that was Abdul Darana World News Special Correspondent Nicola Sena Ratna reporting from New York in the United States. Barbados replaced Britain's Queen Elizabeth as head of state. 
uh, forging a new republic with its first ever president and serving its last remaining colonial bonds nearly 400 years after the first English ships arrived at the Caribbean island. And with firm resolve and in one voice from this day and forever, declare Barbados a parliamentary republic. That was the moment Barbados ditched Britain's Queen Elizabeth as head of state on Tuesday and became the world's newest republic. A 21-gun salute fired as a national anthem played over a crowd in the capital Bridgetown. Prince Charles stood somberly as the Queen's royal standard was lowered and Dame Sandra Mason was sworn in as a new president. We now turn our vessel's bow towards the new republic. We do this so that we may seize the full substance of our sovereignty. As part of celebrations, Prime Minister Mia Motley, who led Barbados's Republican movement, declared the singer Rihanna a national hero. May you continue to shine like a diamond. The birth of the Republic comes 55 years to the day since Barbados declared independence, and nearly 400 years since the first English ship reached the Caribbean island shores and claimed it for King James I. Prince Charles used his speech to acknowledge the darkest days of Britain's colonial past. Barbados received 600,000 enslaved Africans between 1627 and 1833, who were put to work in the sugar plantations, earning fortunes for the English owners. While Britain cast slavery as a sin of the past, some Barbadians are calling for compensation from the UK. Barbados will remain a republic within the Commonwealth, a grouping of 54 countries across Africa, Asia, the Americas and Europe. French far-right commentator Eric Zemmour announced he will be running in 2022 presidential election, joining a crowded field of candidates aiming to unseat President Emmanuel Macron. It was a question that had been debated over and over for months, whether Eric Zemmour would really run for president. Would a man who'd been condemned twice for inciting hatred manage to get the necessary signatures and the support needed to become a candidate? Zemmour's intentions have long been clear, even if he's shrouded them in mystery. Across France, his supporters have plastered his face to walls. Since the release of his bestseller in September, Zemmour's book signings have often seemed like rallies, with his favorite topic, immigration, front and center, and repeated strident attacks against Islam. This autumn, the divisive figure kicked his Karzai campaign into high gear. In October, polls showed that he'd surged ahead of fellow far-rider Marine Le Pen. But those numbers have begun to fall, and cracks have been showing within his campaign, in part because of his penchant for controversy, like when he held up a gun to journalists, or this weekend when he was booed across Marseille, and then gave the finger to a passerby after she did the same. Zemmour also just lost the backing of a major financier. Faced with the challenge of needing to re-energize his candidacy, Zemmour also has to gather 500 signatures from elected officials. They're necessary to be officially on the ballot. And of course, he's got to convince voters that he's their main man and not just a divisive, controversy-laden polemicist. Welcome back, and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. A U.S. judge sentenced the wife of imprisoned drug kingpin El Chapo to three years in prison after she pleaded guilty to helping the Sinaloa drug scuffle. The Omicron coronavirus variant could be the most likely candidate to displace the highly contagious Delta variant. Jazz singer Josephine Baker, who also served in the French resistance during World War II, was inducted into the Pantheon Mausoleum, one of the France's highest honors. The civic rights activist is the first black woman to enter the Pantheon. Lesotho's former Prime Minister, Salma Sabane, was charged over the murder of his estranged wife in a case that has shocked the Southern African Highland Kingdom. The chief of UK Secret Intelligence Service, Richard Moore, warned that the countries such as China and Russia were racing to master artificial intelligence in a way which could revolutionize geopolitics over the next decade.
And finally tonight, ringing their bells and singing carols, a group of Germans dressed as Santas and Christmas angels gathered in Berlin, keen to spread joy and practice their ho-ho-hos despite the COVID restrictions. Most years, several hundred renter centers who rent themselves out over the Christmas period meet at the beginning of the Christmas season in Germany. But this year, and for a second year in a row, just a few got together. The Santas and Christmas angels can be booked for company events, shopping malls, restaurants and kindergartens, and they can be hired to visit families on Christmas Eve. Last year, they all wore face masks, kept the safety distance and avoided seeing carols. This year, it is mandatory to be vaccinated to be allowed to give out presents to the younger ones. In case you have missed out any of the stories we aired tonight, you can rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow with another edition of World News. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Until then, stay safe and have a good night.